Hi, everybody. Hello, Noga. You're still sick? I'm still sick. Oh, all this time, I'm still sick. And you're still wearing the same clothes as you did uh, the last time. Where, uh, I was too sick. <laughs> After the, the episode, where if you watch HBO, you have uh, straight away, you have the inside the episode by the two masterminds behind Game of Thrones explaining the, all the layers and the depths of the episode, D.B. Weiss and David Bernihoff. Boom! So we want to watch their inside the episode, react to it, understand all the complexities of the episode, just to have them shed light on everything that, would, uh, that they put into this, into the story of this episode. Well, I almost broke my uh, fucking couch. Yeah, and don't do that. I will get off the chair. Okay, so let's do, let's do it. We've been building towards this for so long now. You think back to the very beginning of the very first episode. So this is the culmination of one of the key storylines in, in the whole show. Ooh, so the White Walkers were here from the first episode, and this is the culmination of the story of the White Walkers. Yeah, I thought it was different White Walkers. <laughs> I didn't get that it was the same, you know? They looked familiar, but you know, it's hard to, to do it on your own, to connect the dots. Yeah, yeah, this is some grade A analysis right there. Okay, okay, we have to, we have to... And this is for everything. We've been talking for a long time how the Night King's forces have been growing in power and most of the living have been kind of openly disdainful of the threat and now there's no choice but to fight it. Did you get that as you were watching the episode that they were fighting because they didn't have the choice but to fight? I thought, you know, they were just uh, craving, uh, I can't say blood, but you know, whatever that is. That they have the zombies. Yeah. I really love the way the first 10 minutes or so plays out because there's so much tension before there's any encounter with the enemy. You know, as much as they try to conceal it, people are terrified because this is, this is death coming for them. So, yeah, they're like showing us like the deep motivation of the characters in the sense that they're afraid of death. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like, you know, this is why they act the way they do throughout the episode. They want to episode. stay alive. They want to stay alive. And actually, before I saw the inside of the episode, I wasn't sure that they were tense. I thought that they were all cheerful. I didn't know how to interpret their expression. <laughs> I had someone, I, I needed someone to, to tell me. A mediator, what, a mediator. To mediate, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen how devastating a Dothraki charge can be just with their regular swords. And now when they're galloping into combat with um, flaming rocks, it's, it's uh, what could possibly stand against that. I didn't understand why the Dothraki charged the, the dead by themselves. Maybe that's the only thing that they can do, charge. But why not wait by the side? I don't know, why does that go by ourselves? And why not have like a, like a wider trench of fire? And why not light the fire before start with a large trench of fire and everybody's behind the large trench of the fire why go out of the battle and then retreat and they have just like a narrow trench that they can cross no i don't know yeah maybe they'll explain that what they see is just the end of the Dothraki, essentially. They have a plan, and it's important to wait for the Night King to reveal himself and then have two dragons against one dragon and a really good chance of, of defeating him. One thing that they couldn't have foreseen was Danny's reaction to seeing the Dothraki decimated. And I think that Danny can't bring herself to just watch them die, and so the plan starts to fall apart the second she. Actually, I didn't get that at all from the episode. I thought that she was being smart, like, okay, we didn't think that all the Dothraki will die in two seconds and now there'll be the, the, the Night King's Dothraki, so we better yeah. go on the dragons and start burning everybody. Yeah, exactly. I mean, why, you know? So they were thinking that she was making a mistake <coughs> and John was sticking to the plan. <coughs> that she was uh, at fault also. Why? Right, because she was too emotional. She was too emotional, you know. She's a woman. She's a woman. I didn't want to say that, but yeah, she's a woman. Maybe she was having her period or something. Yeah, yeah, her fire and blood. <laughs> boom, boom, nail it.
I thought that what they couldn't foresee was uh, the Night King bringing the winter and then uh, they can't see anything with the dragons. That's what I thought was the game changer, but I guess, uh, I guess not. The Animorphs was supposed to be a one scene character. And then we met Bella Ramsey and we realized that we would not be doing our jobs if we kept her as a one scene character. If she were to die, there was no way to, to not make a moment of it. So. That's where the zombie giant comes in. Zombie giant. <laughs> zombie giant. <laughs> That's kind of a funny way to, to put the whole thing. Like, she was worthy of a moment to celebrate her. Hence a zombie giant. Maybe it's also because it's, it's not white, you know? I mean, he's using a different terminology than the one in the books. And in a way, it's disturbing also in that sense because it, t it turns it into like this zombie film, like a zombie apocalypse sort of thing. Right. And it right. takes it away from the context of the books. Right. When we say zombie, it's kind of like a little bit to take uh, the story down a few notches. Right. The sake of it is zombies. So you were saying as we were watching this, you were saying it's like uh, David and Goliath. Yeah. Boom. Nailed it. That's good. Yeah. Was it here yeah, or it's here? here? It's here. very clear. Very, very close. Yeah. Right. Very close. But David survived. She's no longer at 100%. It's just about survival at that point. At that point. <laughs> Before it was about something it, else. Yeah, it was about uh, dancing. <laughs> yeah, maybe about true love. She's completely unstoppable and she never loses her cool and that's amazing and it's a lot of fun to watch but it's also it's one note. So we decided that almost rewinding the clock on who Arya Stark is to back before she became the sort of magical figure that she's become. So, she, so they say that she has become a magical figure. I didn't know that she became part of the magical world. No, she did because of the, you know, the faceless yeah. uh, thing and, uh, you know, the masks and, you know, being able to take someone's face yeah. off and turn it's it. A, in. It's a different kind of magic because uh, she... Different kind of magic. Different kind of magic, yeah. <laughs> 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 you watched the Bohemian Rhapsody film yesterday, so he's very much uh, influenced by it. And somehow almost every other sentence <laughs> can every be translated other into... <laughs> so let's go. Before that point, there's sort of an agoraphobia to the whole thing where you're in this giant, wide open space and everywhere you look, you, there's something that could be coming to kill you. But once you get inside Winterfell, everything contracts. And, uh... I like it. That was good. Good analysis. Right, where everything is open and then everything is dangerous and going into the closed uh, places. Good. And then it's also dangerous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's yeah. good. Dracarys. We thought it was important that whatever the plan was, that it would not just work out because that would be kind of dull. While there's no reason to know for certain that the fire wouldn't kill, destroy the Night King. There's also no particular reason to believe that it would. So, yeah, like that's not a very good explanation. I mean, it's definitely not an explanation that, you know, the, like the real geeks of uh, Song of Ice and Fire would fancy. Right, and the creator of the show, as they were like sitting, do you think that the dragon of fire should kill him? I don't know, let's say that, uh, no. Yeah. No, why? Just because it's not certain. <laughs> No, we need uh, some kind of explanation to why it doesn't kill him yeah. because it doesn't make sense, so it's annoying. Yeah, why? Why? Why didn't it kill him? For, oh God, I think it's probably three years now or something, we've known that it was going to be Arya who delivers that, that fatal blow. She seemed... They've known for three years that Arya was going to deliver the fatal blow. They've known about the ending before that, for 10 years. So that means that they changed the ending of the Night King from what he is going to write, if he ever is going to write it. So, so they've decided by themselves that they're going to, they're, they are going to change the climax of magic and fantasy in the story. It's very not, uh, the whole story about, I mean, what we saw today is very not George R. R. Martin with the whole black and white thing and like the, you know. Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit shocked, I must say. 
they decided just like, okay, we're going to do our own thing. Or is going to kill you. Okay, so now I feel better that I didn't predict that, she, that I said, no, it's going to be a little bit silly if she kills the Night King. Yeah. I mean, I also thought it, I, I've heard people saying yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of people said it. But I, I thought it was also a bit silly because there was no real buildup for that. I mean, how does that also, I mean, so why the whole faceless men thing? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't help in this situation. So why was it even, I mean, I just don't get it, you know? I mean, I, I could get it with Cersei, but not with the Night King. Right, let's see if they explain it further. Well, she seemed like the best candidate provided we weren't thinking about her in that moment. Uh, hopefully you forget about the fact that Arya Stark ran out of that castle with the battle drums playing and going towards some purpose, and we don't know what until it happens. We That's hope. the annoying part, because this is like the deus ex machina. I mean, we, the, the reason for her to be the good person to do it is because we forget about her and you know we don't think I mean it's an element of surprise the whole thing is well I don't know if the whole thing I mean surprise is part of it but there there's supposed to be a build-up or right. it's supposed to be like smart surprises it's something that connects the entire story of the White Walkers right was she how was she relevant for the Night King in any sort of way until that moment she wasn't. Not John, not Bran, not Daenerys, not the dragons. Arya. Why? Because you forgot about her because yeah. there was so much stuff going on. We hope to kind of avoid the expected and Jon Snow has always been the hero, the one who's been the savior, but it just didn't seem right to us for this for this moment. What? You know, and also the, the long stare between the Night King and John. Well, I mean, we don't know what right. it means. We don't know what anything means. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very bad explanation. So this is actually kind of a spoiler that uh, John is going to do it in the, in the books. John was always a saver, but the fan was wrong. Ah, so you think you're doing it better than he's doing it. No. Bleep. You. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Yeah. It just didn't seem right to us for this for this moment. Look at his face. His face doesn't look right here. Ugh, look. Just didn't seem right to us for this for this moment. He looks uh, he disgusted to by it. To the exact spot where the child of the forest put the dragonglass blade to create the Night King, and he's uncreated by. Was Winterfell when he was created? At, at the end. Yeah, I think uh, right there, like where uh, Bran was sitting. Did you get that when you were watching it the three seasons ago? I think that uh, one of the the other YouTubers said that. One of them? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? I've never heard that. of it until that exact moment. <laughs> he was created in Winterfell? Yeah, he was a Stark or something. He was. Uh, we were saying that he was a Stark, but I didn't know that he was created in Winterfell. Yeah, that, that's what I remembered. But I didn't get the connection until now. Okay, that's a, that makes sense, you know. No, but if you know that he was created in Winterfell or in the Godswood, why haven't they said anything? He was created in the Godswood. That's why I'm waiting for him in the Godswood. Okay. Okay. Or just mention it a couple of seasons ago. Right. So put the dragonglass blade to create the Night King, and he's uncreated by the Valyrian steel. At, at the end of it, it's it's still it's a it's a victory for the living, but at great cost because some of our favorite characters fall along the way. It's a real testament to the entire Belfast crew who gave us something that no amount of money could ever buy. What did they give? I didn't get it. The Belfast crew. What did they give? Always mysteries with those people. I'm more annoyed now about the episode than I was before. Me too. Me too. Okay, whatever. Oh. <laughs> okay, I need to relax a little bit. It's a okay. relax. Okay, thank you everybody for watching. Tell us what you think in the comments.